If you are an architecture student, a architecture fanatic, I created this Terminology Tuesday series on my channel to help you guys understand architecture lingo and terminology that you may not understand. So today we are going to be talking about arches. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your girl Nat here, and for those of you who don't know, my name's Natalie, and I create a bunch of architecture content on this channel. Please consider subscribing, it takes a long time to make these videos, and consider supporting my Patreon. I am putting myself through grad school. I'm a current student at UPenn, and it is hot in here, oh my gosh. Anyway, today we are going to be talking about arches. So by definition, an arch is a curved symmetrical structure spanning an opening typically supporting the weight of a bridge, roof, or wall above it. An arch is also the basis of evolution for a vault. I am going to have a video in the coming weeks about vaults and vaulting. So how arches work? Arches work by transferring a load through the arch to the supporting foundations via the abutments. As the load tries to straighten out the arch, the outward motion is resisted by the abutments and the downward force is transferred to the foundation. Components of an arch. The wedge-shaped blocks used to create arches are called voussoirs. They must be correctly cut so it presses firmly with the adjacent blocks and the load is properly conducted. The top central voussoir is called a keystone. It is always at the crown of the arch. The support of an arch is known as a pier and the end of an arch is called an abutment. Rows of arches is called an arcade. Spandrels in an arch is a curved, typically ornamented space between two adjacently constructed arches. Now, how are arches constructed? When constructed, support from below is required until the keystone is set in place. False work, also called centering, is a temporary construction used to support arches until a keystone is placed and set. Once the arch is complete, the false work is striked. Note that an arch is always in compression. That is why it needs to be fully supported during construction until it is ready to take on its own weight. Then, and only then, is the false work removed. In ancient Roman architecture, their arches did not rely on mortar. Instead, they relied on precise cuts of stone. What are the benefits of arches? It has several advantages over beams or lintels. They can span much wider openings because they carry the load more effectively. The pressure downward on an arch only forces the voussoirs together, not apart. If an arch fails, it is because a downward force caused a diagonal force. Essentially, if an arch collapses, it is because this thrusting motion caused the arch to fall over because the arch wasn't buttressed properly. When arches are placed in rows of support, seen commonly in Roman triumphal arches, the thrust of one arch will counteract its neighbors. Therefore, the arches are stable. Today, modern arches are made of steel, concrete, or laminated wood. Types of arches, there are 10 types of arches. Did you know that? The type of arch is classified by the shape, workmanship, and materials. One, flat arch. The intradose, the inner curve and arch, and the extradose, the outer curve and arch, are horizontal and flat. Two, segmental arch. It is a basic type of arch. The center of arch lies below the springing line, and the springing line is the point from which the arch rises from its vertical supports, known as the spring or springing line. Three, semicircular arch. Is an arch curved to look like a semicircle, and the center lies exactly on the springing line. Four is a horseshoe arch. The shape of a horseshoe and curves more than a semicircle. Five is a pointed arch. It is also known as a gothic arch. Two arch circles are met at an apex, so a triangle is formed. The triangle can either be an isosceles or equilateral triangle. Six is a Vietnam arch. It is similar to a pointed arch, but has a deeper springing line. Seven is a Florentine arch, and it is in the shape of a semicircle, but the rest of the arch is similar to a Vietnam arch. Eight is a relieving arch. It is constructed above a flat arch or a wooden lintel to provide greater strength. Nine is a stilted arch. It consists of a semicircular arch with two vertical portions at the springing line. Ten is a 
semi-elliptical arch. It has a semi-ellipse shape and also has three or five ellipse centers. That is it for today's video. I hope you learned something new. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. Consider supporting my Patreon and helping me pay for grad school. Until next week's video, I think we are talking about vaulting, I think. So keep on the lookout for that. I'll see you next time. Love you guys.